Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate, Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this, my second channel, which is called Nathan Oakley, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the Flat Earth Debate, Uncut and After Show goodness. So we have just finished off the first show, and this will be going out at about 4 a.m. UK time, or 0400 GMT. So a very good afternoon to all the people in Australia, and a good evening to people in America. I'm going to hand you over to the chat while I get set up for the second live show, which will also broadcast after this little in-between bit, and then it will continue with the after show once the live show ends. So with that, I will hand over to our panel and see where the chat's going with there. We've also joined by Adam Meekin, so I'll say a quick hello you to If you them. really believe that, Ranty, you really are a moron. I mean, just to even think that you think that. I mean, you don't You don't understand how to do the maths. I do. I can present okay. numbers. I can create perspective. I, you right. can't do any Five of that, minutes. Ranty. You're Five absolutely minutes. ignorant of what's going on around you. Yeah, you do. don't understand basic... <laughs> Five minutes and we're going live. Wait, you don't understand basic trigonometry. I mean, it's Five minutes. Are you recording live. this, Nathan? This is gold. This is gold. This is really good. I'm trying to tell you what the score is. Five minutes and we'll go live. <laughs> Just going to get a drink. Okay. Please Feel say you're still recording this because listening I to this will, is I will, hilarious. I will, draw, I will draw a diagram for you as to what's going on. So do you, do you not think that perspectively things look smaller in the distance than of they do? Of course I do, and I've, I've done calculations on this, Ranty. I understand when... But you said you would apply it afterwards. It's yes, ridiculous. that's because it's I understand. Ridiculous. It is a critical part of the, of the entire operation. thing. But that's not what you do initially. You work out the relative... Yeah, eventually, things. but you start out displacing you, it you to get a certain calculus type picture. Work out the absolute position of that something. That is a false then, suggestion. And because then when you, you want to create an image, you then have to do the perspective transformation. But you don't understand no, that because you you've never done You have to do the perspective operation. transformation first. No, you don't. Yes, you because that is what Owen, you're analyzing. You're this. analyzing Owen, observation. You have never done this. You're I analyzing have, observation. I have perspective is what you're calculating. From 3D data. You have never done that. You don't understand what you're talking about. You're just <laughs> guessing. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. You've never done it. You don't understand basic trigonometry. I have done it. I completely understand trigonometry. I have done it. I know what you have to do. Ranty doesn't haven't hasn't done it either. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And this oh. whoever got the presented the numbers, he's never done it before. He's never converted a three D image into two D. I have. I know what I'm talking about. You don't know anything about it. You can't Hang do. On, wait a minute. What did you just say? Nobody's ever. Tri nobody's done what. Change None of you on this panel image. have done any transformations of 3D data into 2D. You do not know what a perspective transformation is. You, you're just ignorant of the whole process. <laughs> anyway, I'll draw this diagram in an attempt to explain. Oh, this is funny. This is so uh, funny. Rumpus, rumpus, rumpus. I will... Rumpty Dumpty. Just before we start, yeah. Rumpus, you know this perspective transformation that you're about to show us? When we studied the Isle of Man and debated with the calculator, why didn't you ever apply this to those numbers? Because you don't do that unless you're creating an image, and if you don't create an image, you don't do it. If you well, do we want to create an image, and if you want to compare it to images that are taken, then you do have to do perspective operations. That's what we did until, do. That's what we did do. You actually do Sorry, Rumpus, you can you just get a word in? That's what we did do. We compared images to the maths. Yes, but you do operations on that. Well, I'll show you what you have to do. You went all high pitch there. No, for a don't second. Harry. I just want to know. I just want to know the answer. Why, when we were comparing the maths to the images, as you just described, didn't we apply this perspective transformation? You do not apply the perspective transformation when you want to get the absolute sizes of objects. Right? Oh, we don't. Oh, we we don't want to get the absolute okay. sizes, rumpus. We want to get the relative sizes because that's what we see. We see in perspective view. Yeah. Okay. That's what. Well, what you can work out the angular size by then doing a perspective operation. If you then wish to apply it to a camera, so indeed you do. Yeah, so we did. So that's my point. But you shut, up. At the right shut up. Point, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So that's what we did. We compared the maths. To a photographic view. Well, I don't and I'm asking, shut did. up. Can you shut just up. Let him finish shut up, Arwin. Shut up. I'm asking why you didn't do the perspective transformation when we compared it to the maths in their raw form when we studied the Isle of Man. 
That's just gibberish what you just said then. Uh, you, um, gibberish? I did. This is going to get you kicked out. Either you give me an answer, either you give me an answer, or I kick you out. So I'll ask a third time, Rogers, and then if you obfuscate my question when I ask it clearly, if you talk over me during this question, I'll kick you out also. So, given that we compared a photographic image to the raw maths in the calculation, why didn't you apply a perspective transformation? I did. In my presentations, I've always generated, when I've been using photographs, a perspective version of whatever it is I've been doing. No, you didn't. Yes, you I did. You compared it you, to the raw maths. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, you went a bit high-pitched again there. That's a lie. Because you're a liar, that is no, okay. a I, lie. You, that's Go a look lie. Back and you will see that I uh, generated so you're just going to lie to us. You're lying. You I know you. and you know that you did not perform a perspective transformation. Only when I created images. I oh, you're did. all high pitched again. What's with the high pitched voice, changing. Rumpus? Well, you're just being a wanker. I mean, I oh, did this bye thing. bye, <laughs> Rumpus. Not being a wanker. I'm pointing out that you didn't apply the perspective transformation when you, you directly compared the photographic images to the raw maths that are in an orthographic view. Well, it depends. If you want to know the size of the thing that you're calculating in your size? calculations. What, what type of size? Relative on, size? Me, Relative think, size I'll, or I'll act, what you. type of size? Relative mm -hmm. or actual? You have to calculate the actual size of something. Uh, we're not talking. I've just said this. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, being disingenuous. Let's I'm shut him up just for the, just for the uh, pre-show audience. What Rumpus is doing is being disingenuous. He used the word size so he could obfuscate what he actually meant, which was actual size. And we're studying things in perspective view with their apparent size based on their distance. And that's angular size. And that's not what he's done. So Rumpus is caught out. He didn't apply a perspective transformation when we studied the Isle of Man footage. And all he's going to do for the rest of this show is this. Well, you're interrupting Talk him constantly. Well, you're interrupting interrupt everybody. Him, and for, and for that reason, him, for that reason me, alone, because he's being him. obfuscating oh, he's the point and disrupting everybody, oh, this is where I'm going to get rid of him. Because all he's doing him, is obfuscating everybody by talking continually and causing a massive disruption. So that's where Rumpus goes. Bye bye, Rumpus. Yeah. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below this video. But if you'd like to join the discussion, most importantly, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Adam Meakin, The Plain Truth, Ranty Flat Earth, Jose, Eric, Daniel, Chocolate Saying, Arwin, and I've forgotten your name, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Where are we? Anon. Good to have you all. Hi, Thank you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Hola. Hello. So let's do a bit of housekeeping. Calm, hopefully calm. Any signs of curvature? <sighs> no. Nada. No? Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Right now. Mayo, Mayo, Chinese. Any oh, evidence of the distance of the no, sun? I'm rather happy about it. <laughs> any evidence of the distance of the sun? Distance of the sun? Evidence <laughs> of anybody? 
Nobody knows the distance to the sun. You, because there is none of that. There is. We'd have to be able to measure it. We'd have to get there. I guess right. We'd have to go there and back. First, Maybe. establish that it is a physical object. Right. Well, yeah, we didn't say that. Establish that first. Which I guess you'd have to go to it and touch it. I don't know. Approach it. Approachability is a clear sign of tangibility. Mm -hmm. But the distance yeah. traveled has to be linear in relating to the growing of the angular size. Well, the travel in the uh, heliocentric fantasy world would be through the medium of a vacuum. So is there any evidence <laughs> that you can have a gas pressure without a container? No. Nope. Not even a theory. No? About gravity? <clears throat> any scientific evidence of gravity? Nope. nope. No. It's just an aberration. What about a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical earth? Any evidence of that? No, I did use it in the wrap up. I hope you don't mind, Nathan. Hmm, I don't mind. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Joy. <laughs> Hello. So what about the R value, then? Any evidence of Earth radius? No. <laughs> no. There's an R in the rumpus, but he's no longer in the panel. Yeah, we had the rumpus in the in-between bit. and it implies um, a lot of circular reason. Well, I and, uh, Go on. Go ahead. We've got evidence for no curvature. Uh, as stated in the previous show, these actual those that peak evidence is a, a clear demonstration that there appears to be no apparent curvature in play. Yeah, the Earth is flat. Oh yeah, who is that? Well, that concludes the housekeeping. Thank you very much indeed. Nice and swift. Please share the show if you're watching live. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, that was a, an interesting <laughs> first half. Big silence after the rumpus. Well, all he did was obfuscate after I had him against the wall. So I asked him a question specifically about why he didn't do a perspective translation when he directly compared the mathematics of the curve calculator to the observation of the Isle of Man. And he claimed that he did. He just lied. So at that point, he just rumpus the hangout immediately and just cause total disruption so that was where i kicked him out it's like no you know got you got you mate yeah you should be applying perspective you didn't so apparently... he's out. He's he out said making... he did it afterward but yeah that misses the entire point he's claiming utter 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 nonsense in the chat well people can go back and check it's really easy to go back and check all of those debates and see if at any stage, the word perspective translation came up and was applied to any of those mathematics. I absolutely assure you they won't. But feel free to go and prove Rumpus wrong and double check whether or not he put a perspective translation onto the mathematics when comparing this image on screen right now. And I assure you, he didn't. But he's writing a manual about it. Excellent. Well, I'm sure people can go and check that his manual matches up with the perspective translation that he did on the show live that's still there for people to double check his claims. <laughs> I'm sure they'd much prefer the channel was shut down like Miles Davis's will soon be when he realises that his observation's only possible on a flat plane. <laughs> If the, you're forgetting, Nath, I mean, uh, the rumpus, like he said, he's still working on um, the Isle of Man stuff from last year. So it's just like the whole argument. It's so last year. This past six months has seen such a move forward in flat Earth knowledge and proof and understanding of the, of the realities where we live that they're still stuck in the past, just like rumpus. That's why he's still working on the Isle of Man stuff. In a little different note, uh, I want to shout out Keen L, formerly known as Vinegar Strokes. She's been doing a few open hangouts in the last few days. I've been watching. I haven't joined, but I've seen many characters joining and talking a bunch of interesting subjects. So 
check it out. King L, and she is very active in these last couple of days. Yeah, me and uh, Ken, we did a, a double uh, double thing. We, we we did the Hangouts broadcast on my channel and her channel. We had quite a few people if you had the two together. Yeah, I couldn't get on there. What the heck was going on? I was I heard myself in a, I don't know what how you had it set up, uh, Jim. Anyway. I, I had the wrong link, so you, you needed to get her link on, on her channel. So. Ah, uh, okay, okay. No problem. I thought somebody messed up, whatever. Okay. Julio. Hey, uh, Ranty, I was just going to say it was a nice presentation in the last um, show. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. And I was going to ask something about the what, like, basically what we were looking at. It's basically like an equation, right? So if you have uh, distance and angle, you could work out height. Or if you had height and distance, you could work out the angle. Does that sort of make sense, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, when we look at the sun, it's, we don't know how high it is. We don't know how far away it is. We don't even know if it's a tangible thing. Right. And all we really have is the angle from it, unless it's like directly above you, which would mean it would have a distance of zero, right? Right. So then you would have the angle in the... Uh, um, distance and then if you could somehow figure out how far it's it's moving away from you then maybe you could sort of punch in the last or just make some calculations and figure out maybe how high it is but just, well you don't you, you wouldn't be able to do that because firstly we don't know the size of it we don't know the distance to it so without those two uh, to input or any of those two things to input we can't triangulate anything with it yeah, because we we're never going to figure out the height, right? No. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to uh, be just clearer, clearer in my head about it. Thank you. Yeah, we just see a light in the sky. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it's tangible. Um, it appears that heat comes from it. That's about all we know. We we know nothing else. It's not like we can go up there and feel it. Um, it could be. Um, like Adam was showing before, you can have a mountain that's um, 10 miles away and, and 10 miles high, and then you can have a, a mountain that's 20 miles away and 20 miles high, and it'll look the same height. So it's the same with this, the sun. The sun could be relatively close and small, or it could be 93 million miles away and massive. Uh, but without us actually having any more input, any more data to work from than that, we can't actually figure anything out. Yeah, we don't, know, we don't even know what it is. But for distances, like you just mentioned, figuring out like a mountain that's twice the size of one closer can seem the same size in the in the distance. Yeah, and it's clear to me that a, like you, everybody goes through it so clearly, and it's it's quite clear to me in like just going through the little distance angle and height calculation. I mean, how come Rumpus can't get it? Like, what what extra is he putting in there, or ch what is he changing to to go a different direction with it? Well, he's not. He's just he's just adapting as he goes. He's just spouting any old gibberish that comes to mind because they're they're literally flapping around for answers and they don't have them. Uh, but if they make enough noise and they all pat each other on the back and proclaim victory in some way, they think that they're actually getting somewhere and and not they're just embarrassing themselves. Yeah, I mean, he, he's pretty well spoken, so he's just good at getting a point across. But when you really look, like, think about what he's saying, it, it's just a bunch of words sometimes. And I don't know. It's like you took your time and presented it very well. Then he just comes in and just says he's right. So it's what they always do. I mean, we're used to it by now. Um. Exactly like I say, well, what I said before, I'll just repeat it, which is that they're still working in last year's data. They're still working from things that they thought were correct a year ago. Uh, uh -huh. the, the, the flat earth movement has progressed and evolved in the past six or eight months. It's literally grown exponential and our knowledge has grown exponential. 
they can't handle this because it's a whole new influx of data and proof. Uh, they just want to go back to the comfort of the ball and just keep chanting that it is correct and they're not interested in in looking at the data, not looking in the evidence. We're the only scientists, uh, as far as I'm concerned, on flat earth at the moment. We are actually the ones doing this stuff. We're the ones working it out. They're still stuck from what they were force fed 20, 30 years ago. You know, that's their knowledge. You know, we're changing. We're changing our, uh, our not our arguments, but we're literally getting the answers for the things that we were stuck on a year ago, two years ago, and they can't handle it. Yeah, I see, uh, like, when I go on forums and, and, and look at topics about Flat Earth, it, it seems like that people jump in quite early. Obviously, they haven't really thought about what the person's presenting and then just proclaim that they're right. And um, I think what you're saying is it's true that a lot of people just haven't even started to think about this yet. So if they're going to jump into it right off the bat, without knowing anything about what we've talked about, everything we've gone through, then they're just going to go in that mode, that rumpus mode, and just say they're right any way they possibly can. Oh, if, if you think this is bad now, wait for them to see it in another couple of years when we get an influx of fresh minds that can come in and take the stuff that we've already progressed so far at the moment, wait till in another two years' time when they've progressed it even further. These guys won't know... They'll, They'll be burying the heads in the sand for the next two or three years until they can't ignore it anymore. This yeah. is what's going to happen. You know, we're at the forefront of it now, but in a year's time, we could be at the back end of the queue. There could be a lot more intelligent people coming with uh, deeper pockets that can afford to do experiments that we can only dream of, and they may be able to knock this completely out of the park, you know. We think we have the answers, but can we prove everything we say at the minute? Not right now, but in three years' time, the the the, the amount of people, the reach that it could get to, we could have validated all the things that we're talking about now and have it really concrete in two or three years' time. Yeah, like um, something that wouldn't be that difficult to put together would be like a public weather balloon system, you know? Just balloons, I think they can just go up there and not really need much power to just send data back and to see sort of what's up there. I don't know how high you could actually get one. And then to just have like a gas analyzer and some cameras and shit. Oh, there's probably a whole host of things that we could do. <laughs> things that we've probably not even thought of right now. Um, and just wait, just, just the, the best thing we can do is just go along for the ride and see where this, this, this ends up because we know we're on the right track. It's just a case of finding all the answers and proving all the answers. And, uh, you know, as time progresses, this is what will happen. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else? Arwin, are we doing this show this morning? I know that you had a link out, but I don't know if you actually went live because I was working on that presentation. Yeah, he did the early bird show. I don't know, he's just sloped off for a second. But as he has, right. uh, he hasn't come off mute. I'll, uh, I'll plug my show. So if you missed Miles Davis having his channel taken away from him on show 602, it'll get replayed at the end of this. So as soon as this show finishes live, the premiere of 602 will go out. So you can still chat alongside that show. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's on my second channel, Nathan Oakley. I'll put a link in the chat towards the end of the show. But if you want to go and subscribe now, there's a link in the info box to Nathan Oakley channel where I rerun the premieres. There's also the pre-show on there. And then at 4 a.m. UK time or 0400 GMT, there's the after show. So when the show finishes live, I'll, I carry on chatting to whoever will hang around for a little bit um, on the after show. And again, that goes on to the second channel. So check that out. The link is in the info box. You back, Arwin? Do you want to plug your early yeah. bird show? Yeah, yeah. Flat Earth Early Bird, uh, every day, uh, 1 o'clock uh, British time. And, uh, yeah, we just talk. Uh, no no strict rules. Uh, just add me on Skype. I'll send you an invite uh, to the Hangout if I find you trustworthy. And you, we just talk. It's just an uh, early uh, morning 
a round the table talking show. And yeah, we get a lot of interesting subjects uh, here and there. So yeah, every day before the debates. I've enjoyed it, Owen. It's been good, mate. It uh, certainly helps the uh, clock watching while we're waiting for Nathan to start as well. It's been a nice... Uh, yeah, it's good and good luck with it, mate. It seems to have started well. And uh, I wanted to get in this morning. I think, like Ranty, if it weren't for this distraction, I'd have tried to bomb in this morning because I had a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, good luck with it, pal. It's, it's a nice format and a nice relaxed feel to it. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So I really like it. I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see where, where it goes. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have you on uh, sometime, Adam. So any day. <laughs> Next, next, uh, next chance I get, mate. Probably a weekend with the time you you're thinking, but I'll I'll try and get on one morning if it's a quiet morning. Um, I don't know if the girls will protect me as well as they did <laughs> this morning to have a chat with. You. But yeah, that'd be brilliant. Where I'd love to. Um, can I do a quick plug, Nathan, as well? Is that? Of course, you knock yourself out, Adam. Go ahead. You've worked hard. You deserve it. I'm I'm going to do a bit of flat porn as Roxanne. Um, Kindly, when I showed her some of my math stuff, I got the best reaction from anyone. From the oh, flat porn. Um, so I'm going to go on this evening on Sun and Moon, and me, Zach. I think Walt's going to turn up as well. Roxanne's going to be there, and I think she's going to pick which one of my presentations we'll do on Sun and Moon group. I think we're probably going to do angular velocity, you know, carousel versus ball earth again. Um, but that should be from about nine o'clock on sun and moon tonight. Um, thank you. Cool. So if anybody doesn't know what Adam's talking about, it's the um, mathematics that would demonstrate that there should be a measurable force. Now, when he does the mathematics, he takes the earth spin into isolation. So he's not necessarily talking about the Waltzer effect of going around the sun, but just the earth spinning. There should be a certain amount of force felt so when people put the argument forward that we shouldn't feel anything, all the forces are cancelled out, well, not so. And that's, uh, I agree, Adam, that's an excellent presentation. Cheers, pal. Um, and what, sorry, what, what channel is, will it be on? To, is that tonight? Sun and Moon. Yeah. Family United, yeah. So but we're on there from about, about, about nine o'clock-ish, yeah. somewhere, somewhere around there. I think just, just afterwards it'll probably be, but um, we'll see. Yeah. Um, the channel name didn't get through uninterrupted, so I'll have another bash. So it's on Sun and Moon Family United. At what time did you say? I think nine, nine o'clock is when Karen's asked that. I think we're going to probably be running a little a little fashionably late, as always. Um, so, yeah, probably be near a half past, but um, from about then on. From, so from 20, the 2100 or 2130 hours GMT time. Yeah. Um, depends when we yeah. walk and Zach get act together <laughs> i know karen will be on time but um yeah so just having a bit of a chat as well you see don't need to say time do i gmt time, has anybody GMT. ever looked i just have to can i just say something about rumpus <laughs> you're on the panel you can do it like. <laughs> he's got a google plus post here it's uh what's the difference between good and well i so 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 he loves this so 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 wish that americans would learn when it's appropriate to use good and well, using the phrase I am good rather than I am well should be a capital offense involving the removal of the offender's entrails, displaying them. So you're a lunatic, Rumpus. <laughs> what? Sounds so like a Masonic thing, the entrails. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he gets triggered over it. Like, he's kind of like the little guy in the pub, isn't he? You know the little guy who always wants you're to score. You're an absolute pub. lunatic, Rumpus. Really, you, you need help. He has a writing stutter. Yeah. Hey Nathan, can I uh, real quick just uh, add a quick thing about my show? You can you can do what you like. I keep saying. All right. Yeah. So I I have an open forum, but I really don't have a time. So it's whenever I try to look around and make sure that I'm not stepping on people's toes. But anybody can talk about anything. And uh, I've had an agent following me around here, threatening to shut me down and whatnot. So we'll see how long it lasts. But I'd, if anybody wants to come talk about anything, feel free. Oh, oh, it's a Vegan Goy channel. Can you say that again? Which channel? It's uh, called Vegan Goy. Vegan Guy. 
Goy. No, vegan Goy. G O Y. G O Y. Right. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you have to spell it out because it doesn't it's hard to find at the best of times when you're looking for things and sometimes even if you search for vegan goy it might not come up to your channel so you then have to go into the filters and search for channel so you know anytime that somebody tries to plug something because of the the way that youtube are operating their platform at the minute it's really difficult to search for people um unless you know how to navigate the system so if anybody can't find vegan goy then Click for the channel and it should take you to him there. Yeah, thanks. And if you type vegan goy and flat earth for sure, you should I should pop right at the top somewhere. But I appreciate it. anybody wants to come around. Thanks. I shall check now. I'll have a look. See if you come up top. Vegan goy. Oh yes, you do. I tried to put a link in the uh, in the chat for the second screening with the pre-show of 602, but for some reason it didn't paste the link, so I'll have to try that again. I was playing yesterday with some little apps on, I downloaded for editing videos and stuff, and I created myself a little introduction for my videos. So yeah, I know um, Flutter Music, is it? Flutter Audio, he does some presentation for you guys. He's awesome. But I did my own with little free apps on the Google Store. It took me like two hours, but I got it down. So I got a nice little intro for my videos from now on. Excellent. It's not too bad at all. Uh, did you ever show that um, that compression of the boat that you actually you 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 saw that boat in the distance and did you ever sh display that compression image that i made for you uh, no no i saved it for myself i mean i posted it on the on the skype chat but yeah i never never been presented over here on, well maybe you should YouTube. maybe you should because if you know people are saying that it might just be local to my area well the fact that you're getting the same compression of the boat the hull um in in your location means that it's absolutely happening not just where i am it's happening all over the world and you know this is it's important evidence i thought you might have showed it by now yeah, yeah. It's, i mean it's tricky for me because i'm on my mobile phone so i cannot share screens or nothing so it's okay i've got the image up actually if you want to put me on nath uh, I'll, yeah sure i'll just fire it up now so the bottom image is obviously the image that uh, Jose took. There yeah, we have the, yeah, the same boat at the top. So I've scaled it to, to length. We've got a side on view. We've still got, you know, it's not essentially 100% uh, accurately scaled to the sides, but it's good enough for what we're looking at. And that's the compression of the, the height of the, the object, which is severely compressed downwards whereas it's retaining its width so another great observation there uh Jose and this is just a screenshot from a video so I'm not sure if I uploaded the video but I have it flowing around so I might upload it later just just to have it excellent yeah, so yeah I get all this all the time I go out there is a lot of traffic on big boats and ferries and stuff cargo ships so yeah, uh, it's been very cloudy these days. I went to the ferry like two days ago and I caught some little bit of footage just as a pretty stuff, but I couldn't do a lot of long distance observations because of how foggy it was. So in the next few days when it's you know, warmer and it's cl clearer the day, I will, I will start taking more footage on boats and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you could get a, a, some more of this type of image, um and perhaps more of of it looking exactly like the side on view of this one so we can care you know we can scale it you know even better than this um then we'd be able to work from that you know um and maybe just keep filming and you'd be able to see the compression of the boat on certain days 
and also film in through garages as well if you can because we want to try and identify exactly where they start you know i have a feeling that's in the air yes indeed sir. that would be cool Hey, Nathan. Can I intrude? Sorry, right. I was just asking, will you ever take Bitcoin for donation? Instead of just PayPal? Who, me? Yes, you. Never given any consideration. If people want to give me Bitcoin, feel free. You got <laughs> to put an address in there, mate. It's right under your PayPal link. Put an address. Let me know. Put, a, put an ad up, give me Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, sounds really appealing. Yeah. <laughs> so then okay. you have to set up a Bitcoin account first, right? You don't have to make you just need account. a wallet it's address. Wallet. It'll take less than less than you making an email address. It's literally just like download an app, create a wallet. It's that easy. I'd rather have Chuck E. Cheese tokens. At least I can get pizza with them. It's six thousand dollars. Let's not argue about this right now, please. I just I, that was just a, a thought that Nathan might want to do that because it just takes one link, and a lot of people have coins and they don't want to be associated to Flat Earth with a regular banking account, and they might consider donating if it's crypto. Just letting you know. I'll do exactly that. Thank you for the advice. I've had Gleam in the chat saying exactly the same. Get a wallet; it's easy. So why not? If it's just oh, a case you. of getting a wallet and putting a link in the info box, it's thirty seconds work. Thank right? you. I will do exactly yeah. that. Thank you for the advice. I am not against e-begging no in the slightest. Hit the super chat if you're watching. Can you share my screen again, Nath? I can. Um, the gentleman that did this video, apparently it's a, quite a well-known video. Now I, have, I know that a few people have said they've had this video thrown in their face. Uh, and the guy that produced this video asked me to have a look at the video and try and explain it. Um, and I'm going to address that right now. Uh, um, Dave Jose, you've had this video thrown at you as well. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So uh, we're going to be working on the compression um, aspect of this image um, and what we're looking at here. And essentially, all I'm going to do is this is the first image that was taken from 15.5 miles away. And this is the image where you're seeing a very nice tall slender structure and the last image on the left on the right sorry was taken from 29.7 miles away and it looks rather stubby um, um doesn't really look like the top of the building but it does look stubby so i'm going to prop to the selection of the big one the original one and then i'm going to copy that um and then all I'm going to do is, like I've done with a lot of the other stuff, is compress it. So first I'm going to crop out this image here. So let's crop to selection there. Right, so now I'm going to paste in the... Obviously, I need to keep the canvas size. So this was the original big one that I've just popped in. So I'm going to pop it in there, like so. And all I'm going to do is compress it. So I'm going to just compress it hang on it's straight up compression here we go straight up compression just like with the boats and then whilst retaining its uh width uh, you know width but compressing it from the sides and look at what we got and if i change the con colors on this uh, brightness and contrast and just change a few of these things over you can see how much they look alike now you can say this image on the last this last image which was taken from 29.7 miles away if you compress the first image by 40 percent um and reduce its height in just height not width straight down just as with the bulk compression so it's going in that critical uh, viewing angle. This is the result that you get. You get, as you can see, there's uh, a line that goes straight down there like so. You have this line that goes straight down there like so. 
um as you know you can you can sort of make out the curve as it comes around here you can make out the curve as it comes around here you can see this effect here there and there and you can see this effect here and here all through compression awesomeness do you want to also if i don't know if you're done with that presentation if so awesome can you also bring up the red pill philosophy um image with the the flats that are going down i know you know what i mean right yeah it's up here somewhere where is he there we go got it Ah, oh, here yep. we go. I'll just put it back up. Ooh. All right, do you want to talk us through what's going on here? Okay, yeah, so he's looking across at these buildings um, in the distance. They are all at the same height. So it's obviously each individual floor is the same height. That's how they were built. Not built, at, uh, you know, smaller or higher than the other one. It's just a block of, um, a block of flats, essentially. But you can see the difference between each floor as we get lower and lower and lower. Uh, you can certainly see that this floor, for instance, is half the height of the top floor. And obviously, we know that it wasn't built this way. Um, we know that it's just being compressed. This is a, but, you know, with looking across the water and the way the camera works, everything else that's going on, we get this compression that happens. Um, it's just a function of what, what we see. And in the very, very bottom of this, we get a very sl a, a sliver, this black sliver here which is an entire floor and it's minuscule. If we look at the top and we've got this big area here and then we look at the bottom and we look at this little sliver, we can see that that is an entire floor that's been crammed into perhaps just a few pixels. Uh, whereas in outside the critical viewing angle, we've got a much um, bigger um, field of view and probably a hundred times more pixels in this area so we're able to see it all all this floor and as it gets lower and lower and lower it gets compressed now the thing with this is that if you compare it to the uh, presentation i've just showed before when we compress the building um only this area is in the compression zone this smaller area down here whereas with the 29.7 mile building you could imagine that probably all if not yeah, definitely all of it would be in that compression zone down here, which is why I was able to just squash it down as a as a virtue of compression as opposed to it with, with retaining its its width. And this was taken by Red Pill Philosophy. This image. But also, but Ranty, where's the math? I will not believe you if you don't have any math attached to it. <laughs> have you heard that? Well, well, yeah, but just I agree. Yeah, it was where's the maths for it? Who cares? It's there visually obvious. But if there was a swell or a wave or a splash, it would obscure a whole floor with just a foot of wave. And then if it was two foot of wave, it would obscure two floors, even though it would appear by looking at the top section that you'd have to have massive waves because each section's that big, right? Well, no, when it gets down to the lower angles, it starts to compress more and more and more because it's in that limited viewing angle. So therefore, something that's in the foreground can easily obstruct something that would appear as though it's proportionately the right size at the top but clearly from this image it's not proportional at the bottom so any obstruction will obscure a disproportionate amount of that building but on a day like this where it's nice and calm and flat you can actually see the compression taking place so none of the floors have obscured they've all been compressed now if you were to back away from this even further you wouldn't be able to squeeze that bottom floor into the amount of pixels that you've got in that angle so what will happen it will reach the diffraction limit and then it will disappear it's as simple as that yeah and also to going on to that diffraction uh, limit let me just uh find something just bear with me um oh where did i put it it could well be in this one, yes. So going on to these images that I took of um, the ring, for instance, uh, let's get one up, this one will probably do. So yeah, you can 
you can barely make out all the um, parts of the ring that you should be able to see. The, the nice clear images that you would normally see, you can't actually make out exactly what you're seeing of the ring. We know that we're missing this part. This lower part of the ring is missing. We know we can't see that. We can't make it out from the features of this ring. Um, again, this is in the very, very small uh, viewing angle. So when we go back to this image that I took, whereas in the first image, we've got all these little lines that we can see going all the way down the building. And essentially, you'd be able to say, OK, well, we can we can mark it out because we can see all these rings. If you look at the last image, the one that was taken by this gentleman, you can't make anything out. It's, it's all fuzzy. Uh, we have no idea how much uh, the bottom is being uh, is missing uh, that you can't identify. You know, this is just a, a function of the, the limit of the camera. <clears throat> and, and like you say, Nathan, the diffraction zone. Yeah, by They're default, egg. there's always going to be something in that limited angle. It might be insignificant if it's in a short range, but when you get further and further and further, even at a small scale with a super zoom camera, you can still get this effect when you put the camera on the ground, even at a very short distance. You're losing a tiny bit of that ring, and what's left of it is, is stretched down towards the horizon, and the level of the ground has risen up in the same way we see in all the angle of attack videos. As you lower the camera, the ground raises up. So that's what's well, essentially causing the obstruction because you've got too much in the foreground. Now in this image, it's nice to have the effect in great detail with the mirage below it. So this egg is at that limit, but you're starting to lose parts of it, the bottom of it, shock horror. And we don't need to really look at too much at the, the ring even, look at the, look how the, the Buddha is blending into the, into the track. You know, this is a, this part here isn't part of the Buddha. That isn't part of the Buddha, but it looks like it's part of the Buddha. You know, it's just being blurred into it. You're losing definition. You don't know what. You don't know where the um, where the bottom of the Buddha is in 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 this area here because it's it's all being blurred into one. Quite amazing, really, that you've got this effect. You know, it's suddenly instead of looking at something that's five or six pixels of something that's 30 miles away you know this is only 100 meters away so you can get you know like if you back out of it so you can see the rest of the mirage you can see the kind of detail in in the mirage no you can't see the smiley face on it but you can really make out what it is because it's only over a short distance that he's forced this angle so there you go beautiful mirage of the egg and the buddha that's what's happening at 30 miles it's just scaled fraction limit in all its glory and in the case of you know a much lower resolution with Travis when he was going up and down in the supermarket when he reaches the critical angle the light on his camera splits into two gets massive and then vanishes because it's at the diffraction limit and if you want to check out what we're talking about go and check out the video that's called perspective I think it's called good times for all perspective there's a link in the info box below this video it's on every every one of the live shows and it's Zachary Sabala also known as Good Times for All, G U D T I M S number four A double L YouTuber, and he's been talking about this for two years, and he's had this exact same effect with a less sophisticated camera, but over about um, I can't remember if it was two or three hundred feet, something around that sort of number, and he did it with paint cans with circles on them, and got the same effect, you know, reflecting below itself or appearing to, and it's the diffraction limit of the camera. Well, Conspiracy Cats has asked me to do to go back and repeat this observation, change the aperture on the P1000, uh, perhaps try it in the P900, changing the aperture. I think he wants to have me jump into his tune, essentially. All right. Why? Why? Exactly. Why? Does he not realise that you can't... If I look at the, and let me just go to the images, just one second whilst I get it up, new folder. And I want to get an idea out, maybe for Ranty or myself, whenever you get done, Ranty. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'm just going to open this in something different that I can just flick through. So, 
let's get to a nice clear image so there's the ring in all its glory that's what it should look like yeah that's what the buddha should look like right so i don't know how he can look at these this image this is what it should look like and then when he looks at uh this image here and he sees that it's completely different looks nothing like the original image it's all stretched warped pulled out of proportion you don't know where this buddha touches the ground or where it doesn't why he can't see that this is being blended into this into the ground and being warped why do i need to go back and, and show him more data why doesn't he get his backside down to the trap and do it himself got more pressing issues pressing get it so how do you have gas pressure without a container conspiracy cats are we going to get a glorified question in return about gas pressure gradients i think so you'll have a long wait for him to respond to that gravity so ranty i have seen i don't know if you have come across uh a grid squared like a checkerboard one of the bowlers i don't remember exactly who i want to say soundly but i'm not sure they say that the images don't get distorted well, in the distance, but what that no. person did was he put the checkerboard like, you know, object with little grids, or squares. He put it in a tripod. Maybe if he got the camera six foot high, he put it, I don't know how long of a distance, very far away in a six foot high, you know, tripod. And then he zoom in and you can see all the squares are perfectly, you know, even one to another. So they say it doesn't distort now. Do the same thing, the same distance, go over there to the checkerboard and sit it down on the floor, on the ground, and then go back and zoom in to see if there's any kind of distortion. Because I could bet there's going to be distortion probably in the bottom half of the checkerboard. I would like to do that. Maybe you can beat me to it. It's easier. So I'm going to try to do that soon. <sighs> you understand what I mean, right? I do. I love how the trolls, when you produce an observation like this, suddenly demand repeatability, failing to realise that that aspect is part of the hijacking of the scientific method. So systematic experimentation, i.e. repeating it over and over again to validate or invalidate a hypothesis, gets stolen, and then you make a mere observation, and they say, well, go and repeat it. Well, why? <laughs> what, what for? Yeah, it's a bit like when I was doing, I, I was going down, and I still am, obviously, down to the beach and doing these observations. Three months ago, I had people begging me not to go and do any more. They were sick of it. Yeah. They were literally saying this. And I'm thinking, no, this is all about that. And it's only been the past, what, three, four months or so that we've started unraveling all this. It makes you wonder why they were determined that I needed to stop and they were all getting bored and they were sick of seeing the same stuff, you know. And, uh, yeah, I think they, they knew what was going to come or they suspected that we would find the answers. And that's repeatable. That's repeatable. We're seeing these buildings and we shouldn't, we shouldn't be there. They say it's it? repetitive and it's like, no, it's devastating. And now they're all crying and moaning and it's like, no, we're taking your religious belief apart uh, systematically. And the audience isn't decreasing. So if you want to claim that people are bored, more people are coming and watching. More people are joining. You're getting shout outs from very popular people as well. Oh, Eddie Bravo. Yeah. Eddie Bravo. Big shout out to Eddie Bravo. Thank you very much. Eddie Bravo's ace. To join the panel one day. If he's listening, yeah, there's a link in the info box. <laughs> All are welcome. Where's Anthony today? School. Is it school? I think so. Or homework, one or the other. Probably homework. It's been very busy though. It's been exciting keeping up with what Anthony's doing. I know he's been uh, kind enough to actually disclose some of the things he's been doing on some of these shows. And I don't know if people realise how, how privileged we are for him to be doing so. You know, he could just get on with it, not tell us anything, and then produce the end result. But instead, he's he's taking us through it every step of the way, which is ace. 
You know, uh, anybody who contributed to actually getting him onto that course is definitely getting their money's worth out of him. That's right, Nathan. I contributed. I feel like I've got good value. Well, that's good to know. I do too. <laughs> I think it's awesome what, what Wiley's doing. And Ranty, you're, you're killing it, bro. Thank Definitely you. some good work, man. The Globebuster. <laughs> the Globers don't like this uh, inferior mirage that floats in the air. They, they detest the idea of that because that completely takes away any uh, curvature uh, or optical curvature with uh, the inferior mirage. They hate it. They are adamant that it happens over water and water alone. It cannot happen in the atmosphere. And I'm showing that it does indeed happen in the atmosphere. They hate it. That's the blockage they can't see through. That's why we can't see for infinite miles and miles and miles. I want to know when the actual scientists and physicists and engineers that uh, all these Globers uh, admire, when are they going to actually start realizing the observations that people are doing and realize what's going on in correlation to the observations we actually make in reality? Yeah. Like yeah. Just, it just seems like they're just going to keep denying it. I don't get it. Well, I do. I mean, they got to keep up the narrative. But... To the scientists. Well, it's like the, the, the lady in the plane, she got grounded, didn't she, for, for saying that the Earth was flat. So they took her, her wings away, essentially, uh, for no more than having the belief that the Earth was flat and mentioning it. Um, and that's what happens with scientists. If you go against the narrative, you get ostracized and you get all your funding taken away and, you know, Nobody wants to do any work with you. You literally are a pariah if you step away from the narrative. So that's why nobody goes. That's why very few people will speak out about this kind of stuff. They know it. They won't speak about it. That said, Gav, the Gav that used to do Flat Earth After Party, uh, he released a load of videos of people going up to pilots and just saying, you know, what about the gyro? Does it change? And you know, kind of a few leading questions to get the sort of concession at the end. Yeah, we know it's flat. Mm. And he had it from several pilots, maybe half a dozen. He just produced these like two minute, 30 second to two minute clips of people going up to the cockpit, like I say, and just having a couple of questions in flight. It's really cool. Like I say, uh, Gav, G-A-V, I think his channel's just called. It might still be under Flat Earth After Party, I can't remember, but I was subscribed to him and I just noticed it maybe a month ago. Any uh, other things we need to cover before we round out? I'm going to round out shortly. You'll all get chatty hey, as soon as I end the live stream. It's always the way. Hey, Nathan. Oh, yeah. I think I'll be um, starting a second channel, by the way, which will be pretty interesting. I'm going to okay. upload... Um, all my data onto that channel so it's going to be if i go out filming and i do three or four take three or four videos during the course of the time that i'm there i will upload all of them on the day to the to another channel because i have so much data that a i can't save it all forever right because my hard drive is already full to the brim um and b because I want people to have access to the data that I have. So nothing will be hidden. You know, it'll literally be just real. It'll be uploaded onto that channel. Uh, I haven't decided for a name of it yet. I mean, I think Jose said, Jose said um, Ranty Raw might be a good channel name to, to do it from. And uh, literally just have all, all the videos just on there. And then people can do their own thing with it if they want to download the video and do some uh, workings out on it. It's up to them. Um, but it won't clutter up my main channel. Cool. So Ranty Raw, love it. 
So your main edited stuff that's like a bit more concise will be on Ranty Flat Earth and then Ranty Raw will have your unedited stuff. Yeah, literally just uploaded as I film it. Cool. Okay, well, with that, I'm going to probably right, Nathan, oh. one thing. I was yeah, the ahead. one that made that up. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I would. Nah, no, no problem. But yeah, Ranty Raw would be an excellent name. Sorry, someone oh, said one thing. I think Anon wanted to add something. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say I, I love this show. I've been watching it for the past two months, like every day on the way to work. And I got inspired. I made a, I made a little uh, music. I don't want to want you to play it. I just want you to play it for yourself later on. I've, I've, I've posted a link on chat. This is just for Nathan, um, dedicated to the show. Thank you. All right. Whereabouts in chat is it? Is it in... It's a streamable. It's a streamable link. I've pasted it in the chat a few times, but people are just clowning. Some people are, and I don't know. Not, not many people are saying anything. But it, again, this is just uh, for uh, for Nathan because I I use the some of the stuff from that I learned from the show uh, on the song. So I'm happy to play okay. it if you want me to. If you put it in the chat again, I'll uh, approve it and play it. Oh, all right. Uh, it, it, it's kind of stupid. I mean, but it, I just wanted you to listen to it on your own. But uh, I'll post it on chat anyway. Yeah. If, if you prefer, I listen to it off air. I will just say. Hey, um, I just stuck it in the group chat, Nate. Okay. Well, I'm sure other people would have listened to it by now anyway. So. Horizontal, but after a lifetime of full assault on your frontal vortex, you'll eventually create a curve to conform with the stupidity vortex, appeal to consensus, mass hypnosis, the appeal to authority, say goodbye to Kansas, smell it with Dorothy, fuck your fish eye, pull out that rectilinear, I heard you said you were an aeronautical engineer, see the truth, flat as a pancake, I'm not cypher, I did not get to enjoy a juicy ass trip steak, I see it as is, like I'm sorry. Look up a see the story night, with Polaris at the center. The presenter of North for even our ancestors. Thousands of years, zero parallax. What is your blind with cataracts? It's like millions and trillions of light years away. Shut the fuck up, just parroting Michio Kaku. Here's a cracker, a little Iago of LIGO. That's where the lies go. To rest like the rents in his contraction before George Sanyak spun the contraption. Then the long haired crank, Einstein by name, puts on the ether all the blame and says time and space is relative, and anyone who claim otherwise is a heretic. It's imperative. You gotta drill shit in people's head repetitive. God damn it, give him a sedative. Knowledge is power. He gets handed down like mystical wealth. Let me guess, you didn't get any evidence of the self perpetuating molten iron core in the center of a presupposed spherical earth. Since birth, simulacras and simulacrums. Dealing with molds that let us akin to dealing with the assalamu alaikums. First shake them, then break their axioms. Bullshit detection set to maximum. Shields repeat. Go retreats. God is a day of toil. Yonder's haste and you feel the life exploring Ah, the knowing can lift me from the flat soil Upon his track to follow, follow soaring Meanwhile the pilots are ignoring Coriolis effect, in fact, they're flowing Seamlessly through the secondary rotating reference frame Zero fucks given about deflection rates None, fuck all, but I bet you left to profess nonsense from your boy for call. Listen, mate, you're in a cult. You fell for a parlor trick. David Blaine performing for a Harlem chick. Who knows, maybe one day you'll shed your program prejudice. Trade in your Star Wars comic for a copy of Raphael's Ephemeris. Horizon is parallel. It's horizontal, but after a lifetime of full assault on your front. 
Very good. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you missed show 602, it will premiere now on my second channel. So a link has gone out in the chat for that. Or if you want to just click on the link in the info box to subscribe to Nathan Oakley, you can pick up the second show, which will run at 0400 GMT. So the show that's just gone and the after show, which will continue when this live show show ends but unfortunately for the audience it's goodbye from me so i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video oh what a day what a lovely day i liked it i, I, da -da -dum, I don't da -da -dum. Oh. Personally, I would use it, but you could like you could use these voice manipulators to basically play different characters in the same song. Yeah, and that's why Diago was the as the enemy. He's still there, aren't yeah, well, but not with I, all yeah, of them. I'm still here. Yeah. I'd definitely play that again. That Did would be drop? really cool. Did let him go. He must have done. Yeah, he was. He was on uh, Skype, wasn't he? He was. I just didn't see. Yeah. I had to move the box. I so need a higher resolution screen i've run out of real estate like literally i haven't got enough pixels to put all the things i use on okay i'd imagine you're the same aren't you auntie don't you need a 4k screen i do i do i'll put it on my christmas list Oh, I've got too many things to put on christmas lists they're always too expensive when you get to an adult and people are like what do you want for christmas you're like, well, if I tell you what I really want, <laughs> you're not going to buy it, me, because <laughs> it's just way too expensive. <laughs> so, Anon, yeah, I mean, you know, good lyrics, mate. Thank you. you. Yeah, indeed. So, are you on the ball or are you on the flat? No, oh, I'm. Uh, I'm pretty. Sh I've been looking into this since like 2015. And, you know, in the past year or so, it's just living on a ball is kind of ludicrous, really. But... <laughs> Delusional is the right word you're looking for. Yeah, it took me a while. It took years. I mean, I've watched, I think it, it, it started with Eric Dubé, like most people. And then you believe it. And then you wake up the next day. You're like, no way. This is, this is, this is crazy. Of course, it's, it's a globe. But then somewhere along the way, you know, you realize hey, this is all bullshit. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? That you can wake it up is. like the next day and feel like now that's just a crazy dream. Yes, I did. Uh, I've so had many that times. so many I, times. It's such a weird feeling. <laughs> this is, well, it's, it it's feels very jam. much like a relationship effect. That's I personally believe that the ball religion is imagining is wow. literally a a social construct replacement for having a relationship like being in love mm. it it has all the symptoms it has the same strings the same power the same addictiveness and that people will go so far for it that's typically love induced you know for you would behave decently but if you were defending your girlfriend you will, will go all ape uh -huh. potentially that is exactly what they're doing in their own way. Well, there might be some people I don't even really have put a lot of thought into it yet, like the younger generation. Well, I have. And I, I was there. I loved it, and I defended so, I mean, it to no end. There's a lot of minds, like um, Ranky was saying earlier, that will start to get into this that are a lot more open to exploring and new ideas. Well, and they just what I really did, what I ended they up... They don't have that relationship with it yet. Sorry. What I ended up doing with the globe is basically saying yeah look it is still a possibility just because i haven't personally experienced it so i actually approached it with agnostically dude can you right. ever let anyone oh, i'm just sent trying to to get some more i mean you seem to be For taking fuck's a lot of sake time. dude <laughs> chill out are you what's deaf your, what's your beef what's man just chill dude out there. So, Arwen, have you ever this. have you ever considered getting a pop filter yeah, I, I don't know what I said. It just triggered you right there. Um, I was in the middle okay? of a sentence. 
you do it to other people, though. All right, yeah. I was paying attention as well, Arwin, which is why it's funny because I can bring you on track once, once this, uh, <laughs> once we get, once we get there. <laughs> You know, one thing that does suck about being a flat earther is the <clears throat> the fact that I can't enjoy sci-fi movies anymore. So, yeah, it'll that's pass. A big one for me. It'll pass. What will pass? Not being able to enjoy sci-fi movies. Well, I enjoy them really, a lot. Because your your friends ah. want to go watch a movie and you just can't get into it anymore. Like, just what? sit there and stare at the TV and give and it some happy. time. What? I had that for a while, like when the the hurt really hits you. But no, I, I don't know. It's I approach it similar to, to my ex girlfriend. There There's no breakup ever life. that I experienced that was pleasant, that didn't leave some kind of nostalgic scar. But yeah, I, I mean, Arwen, but for, when for I look at these people, pictures now, I like just choose to remember the nice things about it. And that's the same way around. I deal with science fiction. I know it was fake, and I originally thought it could be real and endless literal physical possibilities. But I don't need that anymore. I can just enjoy it for what it is, a giant, amazing yeah. fantasy construct that is there's, the biggest ever created. Yeah, there's plenty of movies you can sit there and watch and that have nothing to do with the shape of the Earth and... It's just well, I mean, it, it's movie. not just the shape of the Earth. As soon as they start talking about Einsteinian physics with time travel and wormholes and all this shit, I just tune out. I just can't. Yeah, that is annoying. Yeah, but you, they'll always be doing that. So, like uh, the Big Bang Theory, that show is just. Oh no, I'm talking about real movies. I, I haven't watched yeah. Big Bang Theory. The only time I watched Big Bang Theory is when they talked about Bitcoin in one episode. That's it. Oh, they do. All right. I'm talking about like Big Bang know, is the baller me and, show. Me and my wife were starting to watch Lost again. I don't know if you guys watched that TV show, but it's one yeah. of my favorite shows. And it, it, I used to like it a long time ago, but now it's like I have to. I have to believe in time travel, and I can't do it. Why not? And well, it yeah. all depends, really, in how you approach that. Going I mean, back in time would be quite difficult, don't you think? No. I mean, when I believed the in wormholes and space anywhere. and all this stuff, yeah. But now it's not possible. Now it's just now it's just I know it's it's a load of buffalo shit. So you <laughs> yeah, know, before there was like one percent chance that it might happen. Now I'm just like, there is no time travel. This is just stupid. Well, you'd be surprised, but you'd have to what like I, what I every molecule is in that the physical time to travel go back to where it was. Physical just, time travel is not possible. Take too much energy. You know? Don't fight. It is physical time travel is not possible, I believe, for whatever reason. But the spirit can travel anywhere yeah. under the right circumstances. I don't know all that. I, I I've been through it myself, you know. So. Wait, you travel as a spirit? Yeah. That's what okay. your imagination is, are we? No, no. Absolutely I mean, I've, not. I've taken good drugs. I too, learned but... stuff about future events when I wasn't even interested in them. So. Sometimes you do it subconsciously just by. No, you yeah, talk about this thing. No. no, not subconsciously. It was in a separate. Uh, yeah. It, I call it the dark world. It was it basically routed in my imagination. It was like a holodeck like experience, alternate okay. reality, where that's just there was a suggestion of physicality, but only your, because that's in body. my name. Everything was basically a dream, but one you can't snap out of. Was certain things. Yeah, and it was drug induced very much so, but not in a way one would typically expect. You gotta you gotta break this down and go through the from the very very beginning all the way to the end on on the first episode of your show if you have if you already have your first episode maybe one of the next ones but what what are you talking about finish. what are you talking about didn't you say you have a new show yeah early bird early That's bird what I'm saying. yeah well early I'm not bird. gonna talk openly about that shit there why. Because I shouldn't. <laughs> okay. Like this stuff, like the the way I got into that, and I hope Nathan will spare me the recording of this. Nathan, are you recording? 
Yeah, I'll round out Owen if you want. Right. And with that, I will say a massive thank you to all of the backup channel, or second channel, I should say, audience, for joining us on this debate after show, short though it was, cut off by Arwin the Misery. There we go. Let's pop it and gone. There it is. So yeah, once again, a massive thank you to all of the secondary channel audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing the chat. I don't know if anybody's hit the super chat as it's 4am and I'm fast asleep when you're hearing me say this. So I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!